Hi, Dr. Courtney, Jesus Professor here, and in this episode of Prophecy 101, we're discussing the question of assurance of salvation in a dream. A dear sister recently posted a report of a dream where God gave her peace and assurance that she was covered in the blood of Jesus. Since scripture says to test everything in 1 Thessalonians 5, how do we test purported revelations in dreams or some other form of revelation whose content amounts to divine assurance that a specific person belongs to Jesus? You know, it might help to have more details like what the person saw or heard in the dream that gave rise to that conclusion or interpretation. But even without these details, we can still test the interpretation. Sure, a dream or other revelation can be a valid contribution to a person's assurance of salvation, but without testing, no purported revelation should be the main part. Recall that scripture tells us to examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. So come alive, wake up sleeper, he is risen, we are risen with him. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Two big errors of Western Christianity are, one, asserting assurance of salvation from some kind of purported revelation, and two, asserting assurance of salvation from following a preferred salvation recipe, like the sinner's prayer or baptism, without following the instruction to examine ourselves to see whether or not we are in the faith. Examining ourselves is mainly a matter of fruit testing as Jesus described in Matthew chapter 7. If our life is still characterized by mostly bad fruit, we are wrong to conclude that our fundamental nature has been changed through the new birth. We need to ask honestly whether our new life is more characterized by the fruit of the Spirit or by the desires of the death of the sinful nature. Galatians chapter 5 is very helpful here. In younger people, repentance from the sinful desires of youth is pretty clear if they give ample evidence of repentance from sloth, substance abuse, and sexual immorality, for example. In older people who are not walking in slavery to these things, testing the fruit can be more subtle. I recommend looking at three things. One, if you're married, how do you treat your spouse? A born-again wife will more easily accept the biblical instructions to be respectful and submissive to her husband. A born-again husband will become more the servant leader of his home. If your spouse has not seen a change in your character, you have cause to doubt your purported salvation. Women, can your husbands honestly testify that you are more respectful and submissive? Men, can your wife testify that you are less selfish and more of a servant leader in your home? Two, do you exercise self-control in the area of your tongue? Or are there ongoing sins of the tongue like gossip, slander, and cursing? Quick gossip test. Do you blabber to third parties when a brother or sister offends you? Or are you faithful to take the matter only to the offending party as Matthew 18 instructs? 3. Are you really trusting God for your material provision, especially in regard to future things, and are you focused on storing up treasure in heaven, or do you worry a lot about money, and do you bristle at the thought of the costs that may be related to caring for aging parents, giving to the poor, paying the taxes and the debts that you owe, or being generous 
to faithful ministries. We would do well to remember that slander and greed are just as much disqualifying sins as sexual immorality and adultery, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 6. So, when I answered in this way, uh, the sister who had the dream replied, The dream was for me, and I pray that you examine yourself as much as you do me. So I replied, When I read everything in Scripture, I take it to mean everything. So when Scripture says test everything, it means everything. And I also wrote, Have you considered that perhaps my main concern is not with you personally, but perhaps with other people reading that may be slack in testing their own personal revelations. Sharing any purported revelation with other believers is an open invitation to testing and discussion according to Scripture. I do examine my own life and my supposed revelation carefully. I invite others to also examine and test my character, my teaching, my revelation, and my ministry according to scripture and i take no offense at open and honest discussion every month i post a monthly ministry report and i invite feedback just yesterday i posted how i believe the lord is leading me in my ministry plans and goals for the next year and i invited feedback should i not do unto others regarding regarding their purported revelation as I would like other followers of Jesus to do unto me when I think the Lord has spoken to me. Hi. Suicide rates are rising rapidly, so most Jesus followers should prepare ourselves for a more active role in preventing suicides. We are on the front line since pros rarely get involved until a foot soldier helps connect people in crisis with trained professionals. E94.org is a Christian ministry dedicated to equipping the church to prevent suicide through free training of foot soldiers to prevent suicide through training, consulting, and resources. Get equipped to give hope and help and confidently refer people to professional counselors. Learn more at e94.org. Thank you.